In this video, I'm going to do a walkthrough of the exercise for, uh, for chapter four, because I know everybody didn't get the chance to finish it in class. So as a reminder, we're going to be going through and trying to create this kind of fancier plot that brings in some of the elements we talked about, like small labels and references and, and adding in um, uh, uh, different points to kind of highlight unusual data. So this is going to be our goal, and we're using the World Cup data. So let's go through, and as a first step, let's make sure we bring in the data. So this, again, comes from the fairway package, and then the data is the World Cup data. And then let's clean it up just a little bit. So um, if you remember, this World Cup data originally has row names for the player names. And we want to have these later so we can use these for labeling. Like right here, it doesn't have any column name for that. So the, the tibble package has this row names to column that we can use. Oh, let's make sure we load the tidyverse as well. There we go. And we might want that to be name. All right, so now if we look at it, come down here, just use head to show just the few first few rows. You can see that we have that moved into a column uh, with a column name that we can reference to use it later as we're creating the plot. So in this plot, we're using the World Cup data. And then our basic starting point is kind of like a scatter plot of time versus shots. So let's map the X aesthetic to that time column, the Y to shots. All right, so we've got in our, our two of our components so far, we've got in the data, we've got in our, our two initial aesthetics, and then for our GM, we'll do point. All right, so that gives us just a really basic uh, a plot right here, a scatter plot. That's the first step that you're asked to do. And now we're going to start moving into some of these details. So the first thing, we want to um, make it so that it's a, a little bit easier to see all the points, even though we have a lot of them. So the first thing that we'll do, we'll make them a little bit smaller. But then also, we do have some that overlap. So we're going to add some transparency in so that um, you can see the spots where there are more that overlap. So now you can see where this is transparent, that there maybe are only like one or two observations right here. But here, there are a few observations that are on top of each other because this color is darker. So we can do those with the, with, um, um, with the aesthetics, but we're not going to map those aesthetics. Instead, we're going to set them as constant values. So let's do size first. And we could try like maybe 0.8 for that. That should make the points a little bit smaller than the default. So you see they've become smaller over here. And then the transparency will set with alpha. So let's try that maybe 0.5, see if that's too far. That looks OK. So this is halfway between um, 0 would be fully transparent. I guess I can show that. So there we don't see the plots at all. And then one's the default where you don't have any transparency. So this is kind of halfway between them. All right, the next thing, we need to create a new column in World Cup that's called top four. And that should specify whether the team was in these four top four teams or not. All right, if we're doing a new column, that's definitely going to be mutate. And the easiest way to do this might actually be to change so that we pipe the data in and then work with it. All right, so right now, all I've done is I've changed where we express the data. Instead of putting it right inside the ggplot call as the first element, I'm piping it in with the pipe sim sim symbol. Excuse me. <laughs> so things look exactly the same right now. But now this gives us room that we can add on some new steps. So let's add on a mutate. And I think we're naming this one top four. All right, so this one, we want to say if, it was, if the team was in, one of those um, top four teams that went through. So let's look at the column. The column that we want to work with here is team. And we're going to use a logical expression. We want this to be true if the team was in one of those teams. So I'm just going to copy it through so I don't have to worry about spelling. So let's put that right here. And then I want to make each one of these their character strings, so I need to put them in quotations. A shortcut in our studio for doing that is you can highlight the word, and then you can do the quotations just once. And then let me clean this up. We don't need that and part. 
All right, so now we're saying that this should evaluate to true. The team value is one of these four values, and we do need to make sure that we pipe out from this as well. Let's take a look just at these parts so we can highlight and run that. And you can see that it's added on this top four where, let's see, for the first few, actually let's add on a slice for right now just to, to look at things in a shorter version. Okay, so um, here we've got Algeria, so that's not one of those top four, so that's false. Let's add on 10 so we can get down to something where we can see things. Okay, but then down here where we do have Uruguay, we can see that that evaluated to true. So this looks like what we want. All right, so we've got now where we've added that in the data frame we get by the time we get to ggplot, it has this new column on it. So we can use color to show that. And we'll put in the name of that column that we just named, which is top four. All right, so that looks like what we're going for at this point. The next is to increase the data density. And so you can do that with um, some different themes. I'll use the theme view. I like that one a lot. It comes with um, GG themes. So make sure that you load GG themes. And then again, to add those themes, you just do it with a new, a new layer in your plot with a new line. And so here we'll do theme view. All right, so we've simplified that some now. For the next step, we want to make nicer labels. So down here at the bottom, we'll say the time played in the World Cup. We can keep shots right here the same. And the other thing we're going to change is the color label. We want that to be team's final ranking. So we can do all of that with a labs call. And inside that labs, we'll specify the change for each of those different scales by using the aesthetic name for that scale. So if we want to change the um, x-axis label, we can do that with the x. So again, maybe, I don't know if that's going to let me copy it through. So we've got time played in World Cup. And then we're specifying that's minutes. So this part right now, just the X, that's changed just the X scale. Now we're going to leave the Y scale as is. So we won't worry about that right now. But the other one we want to change is right here. And this is the one that's showing the aesthetic mapping for color. So to change that, we'll come into this labs and do color equals. And then we want to put team's final ranking. So if we run just like that, you can see that it's kind of it's kind of long. And sometimes these will grow to take up a lot of the plot space. So you might want to put a line break there. You can do a line break with a backslash N. So just like backslash T we talked about earlier stands for a tab. This stands for a carriage return, so pressing the return key. When we do it now, you can see it's broken that across two lines, and it did the break right where we specified that character. All right, for the next one, we want to add a useful reference. So the standard time for a soccer game is 90 minutes, so we want to put in this reference, this vertical line at 270 minutes, because the way the World Cup works is all of the teams play um, play a certain number of games for the first round, and then it starts breaking down into the lower. So we want to put this break at 270 minutes right at the place where we would expect to move from the teams that um, the, the time when everybody was playing to the time where we're really going down to teams that just did well in the tournament. All right, so that's a vertical line. We can add that with the GMV line. And I usually add those before I add the other GMs that I want to show. Um, every now and then that will help put those kinds of elements kind of behind uh, the, the points that you really want to highlight. All right, so in this case, for a V line, a vertical line, we need to specify what the X intercept should be. Again, we can figure that out by going to the help file for GMV line. And if we scroll down to aesthetics, it will tell us what we're required to have. So for this, this vertical line, this GMV line, we have to have an X intercept. We want to put that at 270. So if we plot right now, it's going to use the default value. So you can see that that's dark and black, so it really kind of stands out right now. And we might want it to be a little bit more subtle. So we can use constant aesthetics for that. One thing we can change is the line type. This will give kind of a dotted line type. Um, if you do line type of three, it gives one that, that really, sorry, this one's dash. It gives one that's dotted. And then maybe we want to actually also change the color to gray. All right, so that's a little bit more in the background now. 
All right, um, so that was everything for section 10.2. Now if we look for 10.3, we're gonna do some things like add in uh, this name up here. So let's put in the name. This is for the person who had the maximum number of shots. So to do that, and there are functions that we'll use later in the class like GG highlight that will make this much easier where you don't have to do a lot of extra steps, but we'll do it for right now. We'll do a top player and we'll take World Cup and we wanna get just the line for the player that's the top player there. So um, we could do that, I think with, let's see, top N. And for that, we want to get just one. And the weight that we wanna use for that is gonna be shots. Let's run that before we assign it and double check. Yeah, so that's bringing out the person who had the highest time. So we can do that. And so now we've got this little data frame that's just one row long that's got the top player in it. And this is all we want to use to label. So let's go down. And before I use that, let me show what would happen if we didn't use the separate data, uh, the separate um, uh, data frame that we just created. So we can use GM text. That's going to be the type of GM that adds these names. And again, there we can use aesthetic. So we've already set the X and the Y aesthetic up here when we did the ggplot call. But down here, we also need to add label. That's another required aesthetic for GM text in addition to X and Y. And we want the label in this case to be the player name. Oh, sorry, I put the wrong thing in for that. I think we called that column name. So we want to specify that as name. Right now, if I run that, it's gonna look really messy because it's gonna add them for every single player. So it's got this player that we want, but it's got all the rest. That's because we're still using this main data frame from the original with every single player. If we wanna only show it for this new little data frame that we created, then we can do data equals top player and specify that. So the default is all of these GMs are pulling their data from World Cup unless we specify a different one. So now when we run it, you can see, oh, I put in the wrong, or maybe I didn't define this. Let me see if I can define that. Oh, I see. Okay, so here's another issue that's going on. We should change and move this aesthetic of color down just for the geom point. All right, so when you do aesthetics, when you assign them up in ggplot, those pass down to every other geom. And so the geoms have to have that column for it to be able to work. Because we're adding the top four right here, if we specify color up here, then it wasn't passing through that same way. Uh, so when we got down here to geom text, it was looking for top four to add color as well, because that was specified as one of these ones that kind of like passes to all of the geoms. If we put it just for one specific geom, then it will only be applied there but it won't be applied to the other. It's a similar idea to how in the R Markdown code checks, we have those global options and then we have the local options and the local override the global, um, but if nothing's specified, it's using the global. So I think that this should work now that we've moved the color aesthetic to only apply to the point, and so now it's not gonna be applied to the text as well. There we go. Okay, so now we've got the name right up here. And if we wanted to now, we could use, uh, I think it's H just, let's see, let's try 0 0.5 for both of these and then V just. We can try to get it so it's not right on top of that point instead a little bit beside. Maybe we need to go a little bit further on this. There we go. So now it's near it, but it's not over that point. The next thing that we might wanna do is have not just the name, but the name and the team. We could do that by coming up here and adding to that data frame. Let's add a new column that's called player team. Just as a reminder, here is what it looked like before. So we're gonna do, let's see, player team equals, and we can do paste, and we're gonna do the name. So that's the column right here. And then we want to paste on team, it's the second column. And then we can see how we want to separate them. So we can separate them by a comma and a space. 
let's try running that. And now if we look at top player, you can see we've got this new column where we've got it expressed a little bit better um, in terms of our, our final goal. So now we just need to go down to this GM text. And now instead of using the name column, we want to use the player name column. So let's just change that. Oh, let me make sure that I've reassigned that. Player team, there we go. All right, so now it's added on those pieces as well. All right, the next thing is to do the small multiples. So we want to show these for each of the positions. We can do that really easily with doing facet. We'll do facet wrap in this case. You do a tilde first for facet wrap, and then let's take a look to remember in our data frame the column name that we want to use for that. All right, so that's position that we want to show this by. So let's do position. All right, um, so now we've got it, but now it's kind of like wrapping those around. If we want to force it to have four columns or to just have one row, maybe we can do n row equals one. So now they're all shown like this. Right now in that little plot, it looks bad, but we can do a zoom and change, change the dimensions on that if we want. All right, so the last piece here is that we wanna make the order meaningful. Right now it's using alphabetical order. We've got defender and then forward and then goalkeeper and then midfielder just because that's the order that it comes alphabetically. But really, we might expect the goalkeeper and defender to be more similar to each other, and then the midfielder and then the forward to kind of order these going up the, the, um, the field. So we can come and do that in a mutate as well. And what we need to do to change this order is we need to change those underlying levels of the factor for position. So we've got this information as position, again, in the data frame. And that's going to be saved with certain levels, and we need to reorder those. So we can use packages from the forecast package for that, excuse me, functions from that. And we'll do position equals, and then it's going to be a function of position. The function will be, let's see, I believe it's factor. I think it might be re-level. Will that let us do it by hand? Yeah, it lets us move the levels to any location. That should do it. So let's do that. And in that, we're first going to put in the name of the column that's the factor that we want to change. And then I think we just put them in the order that we want to actually have them. So, oh, actually, we probably want to start with goalkeeper and then defender. And then let's do this so it's a little bit cleaner to read. And then next is going to be midfielder. And then finally, forward. All right, let's try running that. So now we've got this in the order that we want. And again, we change that order by actually going and changing the factor levels, the way, the order that are saving those factor uh, values before we even get into ggplot. All right, so now we have our final plot. If we wanted to, we could even uh, kind of like export it and save it as an image. And at that point, we can play around some with the dimensions. So we might want to make this maybe a little bit smaller, and this maybe could go up to six, so we could try that. And if you want, you can view the plot after saving. Uh, will work too, you can use ggsave or you can use other things for devices for that, but right now we can just preview to take a look. Oh, those are not the dimensions we want. Let's try the other way around. Three and six maybe. That's looking better. Maybe let's make it even a little bit longer. All right, there we go. So now if we want, we can save that. And we've got that that we could use in a presentation or something like that at this point.